Brian King, UK Flooring TV. Today we're over in uh, Grimsbeck at RWS, Carpet Fitters Supplies. Uh, we're at Steve Rassal's new place. He's moved from Leeds up to uh, Grimsbeck. Uh, we've just come along really, have a look uh, have a look at his new place, have a look at some of his tools, what he's got on offer. Uh, we're with Dan Jones and Pat, uh, Paddy McNicholas. How are you doing, gents? Yeah, same. Cheers, mate. Good so, um, I, well, I'm like a bit of a kid in a sweet shop here, to yeah, be honest. All yeah. these, uh, have you seen anything what tickles your fancy? Yeah, start here and end <laughs> over there. <laughs> <laughs> there's, I, mean, I think there's a bit of everything, to be honest. Uh, just the, it, for ca carpet, LVT, wood, the, the, the lot. Loads yeah. of tools, loads of different manufacturers as well. So. Yeah, yeah. It's not just one manufacturer. It's you know I mean? You've got Yancey, Roberts, uh, Wolf, the lot really, to be honest, even tap-wise. Yeah, we're, we're going to start at this end and just work day and have a, have a look, see have what we fancy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, we know what that is, don't we? Yeah, the, these are brilliant. So, this, for when you're mixing up your smoothing compounds, you put that over your bucket. When you pour your powder in, this gets most of the dust up so you're not creating a dusty so environment attach that to extraction yeah stick the hoover in the back of that if you're working if you're mixing up in a customer's house it's going to really minimize the amount of dust that goes up in the atmosphere yeah. um, but again if, you, if you're mixing up a lot of compounds throughout your career you don't really want to be breathing all that dust in this is going to really minimize how much you do you know how much is going into your lungs so that's called a dust damper, isn't it? Yeah, they're yeah. brilliant. They're all very, very effective. Move to somewhere else. So you got the old original Nail tool. Drive. I've had this tool since I started work. Me too. Nail driving bar. So we all know what that is. Goes underneath the radiator, something low, and you hit it there, and it knocks the knocks the nail in. Saves chipping the paint off the radiator, doesn't it? Yeah. Part of my toolbox, one of those. So I'm, yeah, mine's that flat on top, and it's got a bit of a bow in it from having been using it. The um, the uh, small seaming box, though, is that yeah. something you use? I've got the uh, the big one. Do you know what? I like these. The only thing is, I'm too tight to buy things, so I keep looking at these. There was a wholesaler by us, and it had been on the desk for two years. And the day I decided I was going to go and buy it, it had gone. <laughs> But yeah, that's quite useful because it's a nice little box. So that just fits your iron in though, Just it? your iron, just no, no lift tape. Lift that one up, the, the Janssen one. That's the one I've got. So you've got Brian's box. He lives in this. Because <laughs> you can <laughs> give it in there. <laughs> so yeah, this, this takes your iron. It's got an iron shelf in it on a hinge. You can put your tape underneath. You can put your clamps, your seam weld in this. And if you have to stand on it in the back of your van, it doesn't collapse, does it? No. So... They are, they're all sold as an extra, these things nowadays. You used to get these when you bought the irons, but you, you have to buy everything now. So yeah, yeah. so you can buy the small one or the big one. Last year, years, that metal box though, wasn't Steve's it? got his chisels that we've been giving away the years before. You've seen that knife chisel. The, uh, what is, the, you're, the, you're on these, aren't you? Do you use these, bro? I'm using the pronies, but I have got some of those, and sometimes in summer, I do, I do wear those. Do I, if I'm working in a small area, like a small toilet, I'll shove those on. If I've got a bit of an air pocket, they're, they're not bad to be honest. The only downside with them is uh, they start smelling after a bit, so you've got to keep washing them. Yeah, it's a trouble with clothes, you have to keep washing them. <laughs> <laughs> the, do you know the, um, the stir tools, the curved yeah, ones? Well, Something I've never used. I've got one of these that I've had for years. I find it quite difficult to get the pressure on to tuck it because. Normally what you're going under is quite wide off, off the skirting. Uh, I, I've got one, I, well we've had two of them, I've never used it to took out the box. I've also never used one of these I've not, with I, a T-handle, but I've used the Roberts Easy Tuck, is it called, with the plastic handle. They do that with a T, don't they? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's quite useful because you, yeah. you can rock the carpet and use it like a tucking knife and, it, and it's plastic. The curved uh, ball, well, the curved stir tool or ball stuff, what's the idea of that? Is it for it's like to get under, under radiators? Under low, like it's that, under yeah. low stuff and yeah, you have to really, you can't, can't get this out, but you, I, I find you have to try and push on it from the end because you can't get uh, as much leverage. Yeah. And but there's the uh, cookie cutters. We've got the cookie cutter, yeah, we've done it. We've, we've done the, uh, a demo similar, on them. Similar to we? the yeah. ones, yeah. We've got your, I think that's a one meter, is that two, it's two meter that, isn't it? Yeah. Two meter straight edge, but it's got the grip, the grippy back on, so if you're using that, it tends to Stops not, not slide off, yeah. That's more of a paddy thing, that is. Uh, he's got, is that cam rate? No, that's a pin rate. rate. Yeah, it's a pin rate. Pin rate, get that down a sec, they're really good. 
So your pin rake, um, it's got adjustable pins on, so you can set this at whatever depth you want, so that when you drag your compound out, you're going to get an even amount down over the big area, yeah. the areas you're working in, um, and get a really good, nice glass finish to you. I've, I've seen compound. you using one of them, haven't I? Yeah, so, rakes, yeah, rakes are brilliant. If you've got a nice flat floor to work on, yeah. um, if you pull a rake over it, you know it's only going to put the compound down at the, the same dis the same depth throughout the whole job. Yeah. So yeah. therefore, you're going to achieve a really high finish with your compound, and it's also considerably quicker to use than a trowel. So it's more accurate. It's quicker. It's make you better at your job. Would you see me use one of those over a coal? Yeah. Like a, the rake. Yeah. I'm, personally, I use a cam gauge rake, but these are very good as well. And like I say, with the cam gauge rake, you're the, the depth is set as they are, but, but with this, you can alter the depth of the compound that you're putting down. Um, so again, it's probably a bit more versatile than a cam gauge rake. Um, but yeah, brilliant. It, it, all fitters should have a rake in my opinion. Of some form. Yeah. What's the uh, what's in the box there, Pat? The, the, the Jansa bevel tools. These are the Jansa bevel tools. It's like what, what super, supermarket sweep for flooring <laughs> tools. I know. Get the trolley out, <laughs> throw it all in. So these are for taking the burr off the back of your LVT. You slide your LVT through there, it's got a blade in it, an angle. So it will take the burr off does the back. does a front bevel as well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, you'll be able to put the bevel you, on you the You can do that in well. different ways, can't you? Yeah, personally I prefer to use an X-Acto to put the bevel back on my LVT. Yeah. Um, but these are just as effective. Do the job. And there's your old Azure cutter, your vinyl trimmer. Um, that's that was basically the, the first vinyl trimmer. I had the orange version of that. Uh, I, I quite like these. The only thing I did find, I don't know, is whether you get a bit of wear in them. Some vinyls it'll cut a touch short. Some vinyls it'll touch a touch big. Most vinyls it, it cuts perfectly. Uh, but it, yeah, it's a good tool. They, they don't break the bank, do they? Uh, well, I worked with a fitter. He had one, and he cut the vinyl, and it was spot on. So I thought, oh, right, I'm going to buy one. I bought one, used it first time, cut it short. So yeah. then it just went in the back of my van. I've not, not used it since. But again, you need a combination. I mean, you can use a knife for everything. Um, but don't don't think because we show these and show vinyl trimmers that we can't cut it with a knife. We we, we can cut it with knife, scissors, what, whatever you want. It's just sometimes some things are quicker than others, aren't they? Yeah. Or you prefer to not have the stress of worrying about whether you've held your knife in the right way. You just grab that and push it. It's nice it down to have a variation of tools in your arsenal as well, yeah. so you never yeah. know what's going to. And it breaks your boredom, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> right, let's move down and see what else we've got. Right, we're we'll moving down to the Roberts stand. Uh, right, let's have a look what's here. With uh, the uh, loop pile cutter, that's, yeah. I use one of those. So we might as well start with the row finder. So they've got a row finder here. It's got the spade end on it. it does have a spade end on. What's that for, Dan? And it also has a pointed end. Uh, if you're going to do a join or you want to cut a, uh, a flight of stairs in carpet, in carpet. Um, you can use this to mark where you're going to cut it. It actually will follow the gap in the tufts where the carpet was made. Some carpets have a little bit of a, um, a wander in them, but most things you'll cut, you, you'll be able to find a straight edge, find, find a row, and then when you've opened a row up, which you can either use the spade end or wh whatever suits the carpet without digging into the backing. When you've opened a row up, you'd then move on, or I personally, if I was doing the join, would move on to then your loop pile footer. And how does that work? Uh, and then you slide that into the groove that you've opened up with with your row finder. It has two blades. It has a left blade and a right blade. When you cut the left side, you bring the left blade down, which cuts close to the pile. When you cut your right join, you drop the right blade down. That co cuts close to that pile. So it gives you a, a nicer join. I would say if you was doing a loop pile, sometimes you might want to leave the, the bit that's on because you don't want two loops to look like they're closer together. together. Yeah, yeah. But again, that's that's a good tool. I use that for stairs. I use it for joins. Um, yeah, well, there's two. There's there's the Roberts and the Crane. Yeah. Uh, personally, I prefer the Roberts one. And I do. I've got With the Roberts. With the, the handles, a lot more. Yeah. As well. Yeah. 
So uh, we've got your, your, your scraper there, uh, generic scraper. And we've also got the adjust this adjustable length one, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got the adjustable hand roller there, so you can adjust the length. We've got your carpet shears, these have got plastic coated handles. Uh, and they do make a nice pair of napping shears. That's, that's something that all fitters really want in your bag. If you've cut some high tufts off or if you've done a join needs a little bit trimming. Normally if you've done a join and needs a row of tufts uh, trimming off, it's because you haven't got them sitting down on the floor though. So These are brilliant as well. Never used one? Never, Never used, used the car before no. that. So when I was younger I used to do a lot of work in schools, ripping up cord and vinyl and whatever. This will grab onto it and instead of pulling the carpet and tearing the, your fingers apart, you just grab hold of the handle, it pulls it shut and you can then pull your carpet up. Um, very good until the carpet breaks and you go flying back. But the, uh, that's the, the lino knife. Those are the, that's yeah, the lino knife I use. Lino knife there or uh, carpet fitters tucking knife. You can use that as uh, very sharp on this inside edge. If you're using it as a tucking knife, if you're using that as a tucking knife. You need to be very careful of that or do what I do and just blunt it off because you, you're never going to use that part of it for, for carpet. The, uh, the, the gripper cutters at the top, top rounds. These strip cutters, yeah. Yeah, I don't see, uh, they just look a bit fiddly. Have you ever yeah. used those? Do you know what? I'm happy with the gripper cutters I use, which are just normal. Uh, I do see lads with them, but I'm working on the, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So I just use standard gripper cutters. I do see lads with these and they change the blades. I, you can change the blades easily, but uh, I'd say I'd say they're not for me. They do the job, and I see a load of lads on the internet that love them. So it's it's yeah. horses for courses. Just something I've never fancied. They look a bit no. too big, and, and they're a bit bulky, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is the same as big, I suppose. <laughs> see, uh, the, those are the gripper cutters I use. Just show them, yeah. Dad. Yeah. Nice and simple. You can buy replacement blades for them. Yeah. So. You don't have to every time your gripper cutters are worn out, replace them. You can buy a replacement anvil for the bottom and blade for the top. Um, and they're pretty simple to undo. Two screws and you can replace them. Again, watch your fingers because that is as sharp as a standing knife and they're brand new, aren't they? Yeah, yeah I've seen people cut themselves trying to change those. And the tack lifter, the tack lifter is something yeah. I use as well. Uh, yeah, tack lifter is probably one of the most useful tools in your box. That is the... Gripper up uplift tool of the century for a carpet fitter yeah Cracking yeah it. yeah get stair grippers off nice uh, the angles it's got on it will flick things up quite good um, it, it's surprising sometimes that some people haven't seen these and brilliant to, too to me that's one of the I first things about I had. six quid something are they yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Much, yeah and then uh, you've got all the replacement bits for your knee kicker yeah you can uh, refurbish your stretcher so you've got the you can buy a new set of pins for your stretcher you can buy new nap grips for your stretcher and you can also buy a, a new pad for the back I don't, i've never had to replace a pad I, I think when the pad goes it's time for a new new yeah, kicker yeah. for an excuse for a new kicker anyway yeah. um, what else we got we got the the long neck jam saw which the last video we did was was on down there yeah, and we've got some uh, general purpose heat seam tape there. Carpet oh, took you around yeah. this earlier. That's yeah, we give one of those away, don't we? Yeah, yeah. and I, I work with a lad who's got one of these, and I keep picking it up. And uh, I have a speed cap, but I keep picking this up because he brings it in the room, and it, it is it is a good. I tool. do hear good things about yeah, about yeah. that rolling. Uh, I, I think even when he's used it a bit more, and the corners have gone off the wheels, so it's a bit more curved on the wheels. I, I think it'll be, be even better. But yeah, that, that, that's a good tool. And you can buy the replacement wheels. Yeah, he's got replacement wheels around here somewhere. Yeah, just there. Right, let's move on. Yeah. Dan, I've noticed the uh, plastic tucker up there. I use one yeah. of those for size. Or is that something you use? At all? Yeah, I, I quite like these. Um, doesn't mark the skirting. They're not really thick at the end. You can actually use them to tuck. You don't have to use them like a stair tool. You can actually rock them. Um, they wear down as you're using them, don't they? Um, I, I, I've worn them down to there and replaced them. One side's curved, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. got a curve on the one side, but you, you soon wear it down if, if you use it how I use it. Sometimes I'd, I'll move it a bit, but yeah, that's a good tool. I'd say it's well worth having in your bag. Like I say, I just use it for sizeable. It, it works well with sizeable. 
Well, we've got some, you've got the cam gauges there. Um, I'll be buying some of them to take home. What are those? What are those for, Paddy? So, <coughs> these are to set the depths on your cam gauge rake. So, before we had the pin rake, these are for the cam gauge rake. So, the cam gauge rake sits on a rounded pivot instead of a pin. So therefore, when you change the angle of the handle when you're using your rake, it still sets the same depth of the screed. Right. Um, so yeah, these are brilliant. Um, they are in American. They're American, so they're in inches instead of millimeters. But they're still fantastic. And for me, this is this is the rake I would use if I was putting a smoothing compound down just to get that absolute perfect finish on a good floor. So yeah, I'll be buying some of them to take back with me. What about these, uh, I see a lot of you LVT fitters with these pencils here, you know, with the... Yeah, so you've got these pencils here, obviously you can get the refillable um, lead to go with them. Um, a lot, I see a lot of fitters using these and have them on their tool, on their, in their pockets. Um, personally, I prefer to use a biro. Right. Uh, because you get, with a biro you get a, same consistency of a line no matter how long you draw in it however right, these yeah. are still really good for marking out um, also it's got a cheeky little pencil sharpener and you can get colored, in the hand of colored lead for something like as well yeah yeah so again worth worth having so you've got definitely and the uh snazzy knives down yeah so you've got all the all the fancy colored knives you've got all the metallic effect and all the weird and wonderful colors um, the fancier your knife is, the more likely it is to get nicked on site. Mm. That being said, it does look the business. And you know it's yours if you're the only man with a green yeah, one. Yeah, apparently manufacturers sell a lot of pink knives because people buy pink knives so that they don't get stolen on site. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's justified all the pink tools you've got, Brian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we got well, this. This, this is a new knife, is it? It's a bit smaller than. That's called a tuner, is it? Right. Tuner knife. It's not yeah. a dolphin, this is a tuner, it's a little brother. It's just slightly thinner than the normal dolphin knife. A little bit smaller. Um, it's got a stronger magnet. Man, it is quite a nice little knife, isn't it? I like it, them. They fit nicely in your hand. Yeah. When you, you know, if you're doing a nice intricate LVT job, the smaller the knife the better, to a degree really. And you get around um, the back of things as well. Yeah, so yeah, it's another thing I'll be taking over with today. I spend a fortune. And we've got the also power stretcher the, uh, down there, Dan. Yeah, we've got the... Uh, the, uh, the Roberts, uh, the, I thought the Roberts uh, came with aluminium tubes, that's not steel, or...? I've got aluminium tubes in mine. I think, it, I, don't, I don't think there's much difference between the price of an aluminium and steel tube yeah. uh, version. Well, I've got the Ali tubes, but I've also got some steel tubes as well. Um, that, this is the carpet fitter's favourite friend, isn't it? You can upset as many people on the internet as like these. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but British standards has changed now, hasn't it? Um, and it's f over four, meter, over four, four meters. Oh, over four me meters. Anything four post. meters and over. Uh, uh, power power yeah. 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 All so, carpet so, fitters should have one, really, shouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. Personally, I think so. Yeah. There's a debate on different forums. Yeah. You've got one, yeah. but uh, personally, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, be without mine. Well, it's just something you're told to have, it's pretty standard, get it, chuck it in your van, when you need it, you need it. Uh, it's got me out of so many problems. And yeah, yeah. I think mine has got more people out of problems than me. <laughs> <laughs> because when someone needs something, they know who's got one, they just say, can, you borrow, can I borrow that off you? So, uh, it, I mean, and once you get used to fitting with one, they ain't that slow, are they? No, um, no, even no. setting them up, when you first get it out of the box, it's a bit daunting when you first get one. After that, you soon slide it together. Uh, and then they use that. They have this quick lock pole, which is at your stretcher end. So if you're coming on an angle with your pole and you need to get it longer, every time, every time you go to your next patch, uh, and if you hold the head of your kicker down and, and the poles are quite long enough, you can just lift the handle and it opens that up for you, doesn't it, Brian? Yeah. I, yeah. When I got mine, it didn't have an auto lock tube, so I, I went for years without one. And, uh, the average it is a good tool. It's to the yeah. inch in yeah. it, isn't yeah. it? And it saves you getting another pole. Yeah, yeah. If you just move it around. Yeah. Next thing we can have a look at is this Janser circle cutter for your cutting around your rad pipes with your LVT. So if you can mark where your pipe is, <laughs> you can then put this through the LVT and you just spin it. And it'll take the 
put your hole in your LVT and then what you want to do is go around the back as well and you'll get a nice perfect circle cut to go around your rad pipes. And the, is the gauges on it so you can whatever yeah, width the pipe? Yeah it's got numbers on for the for the size but you want to be marking up the area you want to be cutting and then just Mark go to that around. anyway. Is that something you use? Yeah I've yeah. got one of these so again you go through the top first then come through the bottom yeah. and you get a nice perfect circle so to go you around do, your rad pipe. Do you mark a square back and put a cross yeah. in it and go for the middle? Yeah, that's it yeah. Down the scissors, the shears, um, yeah. I, I went for years using, do you know the brown ones that sound yeah. here? Yeah. I went for years using the big metal ones and recently, I'd say in the last 12 months, I've gone to the, the ones where you've just... The finny scissors. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. finny scissors. That's, I think the finny scissors are brilliant. That's all I've ever used because I'm, I'm left-handed. When I first started work, uh, I got a pair of left-handed scissors which came a pair like this. They didn't even have plastic coating, they just had paint on. They was like something from the 1920s. I couldn't get on with yeah, them. Yeah, I've used them for years. Yeah. Years. I've like, used my dad them. always used to use them. My dad cut things at arm's length with the whole blade of them, and he got on with them. I didn't get on with them. Uh, so then I went to them left-handed 10-inch. Didn't get on with them. Uh, and then when I was about 17, I got a pair of these, and I've just them. The only things I ever used. They used to have solid red handles, but yeah, amazing. They're, they're semi self-sharpening real sharp when you get them. I mean, the, the thing I used to do is if I was fitting a vinyl, I'd push it into the corner, bring it back, cut it with my scissors, and cut the end of my finger off when they was brand new, because he, it's just that sharp when you look, <laughs> keep, you cut the end of it's your that sharp, you don't feel it. Yeah, yeah, we've all been there. The shears I have, I, I, I had years, and I just kept getting them sharpened, but the price of the finny ones, you, well, can, you can just afford buying new. They last me a year, I'd say, well, the, and then I'd turn them into underlay scissors and, and, yeah. and, and promote the new ones to the new carpet scissor. Yeah. Them look quite nice, these Wilkinson's one, but again, I'm too scared to try something new when I'm happy with what I use every day. Um, so again, on here, we've got, we've also got these uh, Janssen blades. I think they're quality blades. Aren't I use Janssen hook. Yeah. I use the Janssen hook for uh, domestic vinyl. They're, they're good, good blades, and they last as well. They yeah. last. Yeah. I, hook blades never seem to. They last forever, don't they? A hook blade does. Yeah. They, yeah. You don't need to replace them like a straight blade. But um, and you got there your vinyl weld. Cold weld. Cold weld. Yeah. 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 That that's good stuff as well. Um, that that actually melts your two wear layers together, doesn't it? So, so it's one. Yeah. 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 And then you've got the uh, gripper space as what you invented oh, got some stealth. Gripper space is there that Steve sells, yeah. So what Steve makes and sells them. Now moving on to seamers, and uh, what have you got there, Paddy? Is it a camera? It's, it's a sanding trowel from what, Janssen. What do you use that for? So this is great for blocking down. Um, if you've got high bits of concrete on the floor and you don't want to get your grinder out, this will literally eat through your floor. Oh, just like a hand down. This is what you have yeah. Well, yeah. That's probably what people have seen before. Yeah. And that is this improvement. You, you'll kind of find that these sort of sit on top of the floor a bit more, whereas this will dig into the floor and any sort of, if you've got a ridge in your smoothing compound or, you know, there's a bit of, a bit of concrete sticking up on your floor, this will well and truly eat through it. Um, whereas you'll find that these kind of sit on Skates top a little bit, bit more, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So these are very, very good. I've, I swear by these, They're fantastic. If you get one, you will not regret buying it. I can assure you. Um, yeah, and it doesn't get smaller and smaller, does it? No, it doesn't. It'll just last you forever. This pretty much, um, and like I say, it will go through pretty much any compound on the floor. So definitely worth getting one of these. Another thing I've noticed here, uh, lately I've seen a few posts online of these little tiny crowbar things. What are, what are those, Dan? Well, it's a halter pause again. It's just, a, it's just a little lifting bar, isn't it? Really nice. I'm going to have one fit, fit in, your knife, in your knife pouch. There's always that one nail when you're fitting that isn't in all the way or you need to get out or something. So if you've got that around you, it, it's there to hand, save you walking to your tool bag. It's a nice little thing, isn't it? Yeah. I saw one of the NICF members with one of these the other day, a picture of it. It actually looked a bit bigger in the picture. Now I've seen it, because I said, I, I said, I've seen a smaller one, but now I've got here, this is this is a smaller one, it's nice. I have seen a few uh, raving about those. Yeah, so. I'm going to get one of them to take home with me today as well. Yeah, good stuff. 
good for your piggy bank. The further the down we get, the more my bills increase. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, uh, Roberts Cutter Dancer, what you use? I've got one, I don't really use it to be honest. Yeah, I first started with the uh, Roberts Golden Touch Cutter. Yeah. Uh, I had the foam back one, the, the foam back one and the carpet one. It, again, it's a good tool, but the thing I'm on more is the uh, Trim Master I use. Trim Master? Yeah, I like the Trim Master, but yeah, that does the job. I see quite a few fitters who who use these. Uh, the kickers, Robert seemed to be a head on kickers really, like knee kickers. Uh, do you use the GT? I just use the, yeah, the plain GT and I, and I really like it, it's a nice kicker. Yeah. Um, I did have a go with a wider head one and they, I thought that you'd have to kick them harder but the, the, wider, the wider head one I think I'll have next, so I'll go for the 2000 next. Yeah, there you go Paddy. Okay, so <laughs> these are cage mixers, this is a Pajarito cage mixer for mixing up your smoothing compounds. Um, a cage mixer is the best mixer you can use really for Gets a vortex going. smoothing compounds. Yeah, it spins everything around instead of the plastering whisks that a lot of people use suck the compounds at the and bottom. aerate it a lot. Yeah, this will get, it just should mix this a lot better. When you use one you'll, you'll realise yeah. that, um, and they don't pull the compound to the bottom and then flick it up. So it's a lot less messy as well. You could even use that with your, your drill. Yeah, yeah. you yeah, can lift that quite, quite out well. of the compound without anything spattering. Exactly, yeah. 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 yeah, they're really good. Yeah. Well, we got another padded tool there, there you go. Yeah, scribing bars. So these, these scribing bars you're a bit more limited to because you can only put the pin in the middle. Um, so these are just really for scribing off the wall or coming, you know, scribing round. Whereas a this is more there. my weapon of choice. Uh, so with this one you can put a pin in the top so you can get a nice circle coming round. Uh, you can put a pin in this end as well. Obviously you can alter the where the blade goes so you can put a pin in it and you can put a blade in this so you get a lot more versatility of the cuts you can get. Um, like I say these these are fantastic. How do you so those much quality you can do with these. Yeah, yeah it is, it is. Um, there's a lot you can do with these tools when you know how. So they're fantastic. Right, I'm going to move down here now. You ready? Right. Yep. Paddy, I see a lot of a lot of fitters using those. What, what, this, what are they and what's the benefit of them? So this is a Japanese A2 notch trowel. So these are for gluing in your borders. I use these for all my border work. Um, the awkward areas like around the back of the toilet. Yeah, like so that, if, yeah. You, if you fit your main bed first on the 45 and you've got the border left to fill in, you've got that in, you want to glue it in, they do different thicknesses. So there's a two inch one, a three inch, and there's four inch. Because they're so thin, you can bend them in to your border and you can get into them hard to reach areas and get all your compound in there. So again, like I say, there's the four inch and three inch and the two inch wide trowels. Brilliant for design work with LVT um, or just gluing in your normal border. Definitely, definitely worth having. Also, they're very easy to clean. So if you're a bit of a messy fitter and you don't clean your trowel, when you finish using it, the adhesive will come off this very easily. Um, that being said, when you've finished using your trowel, put it in some water and when you take it back out, it's pretty much cleaned itself anyway, yeah. Uh, I've noticed that the most common things what go wrong with your maestra, your spring and your rocker switch, yeah. they're in stock. So we got, Steve's got the spares for that uh, and we'll, we'll go a bit more into the spot mail stuff because we've actually got spot mails here with us as well today with yeah. all their gear, so, uh, uh, so they're readily available to fix you. Fix your stapler. I've noticed what. And that, uh, that's a useful thing there. Yeah, that I have one of yeah, those. You can put your spot nail staples in that, you can put your uh, normal uh, hand stapler staples. That saves them going all over your van when you've paid 20 quid for a box. Or yeah, the boxes always yeah. fall apart, yeah. don't they? Because yeah. of the weight of the staples. There's the um, uh, tack wire stapler as well, the battery powered one. They're not on yeah. the market yet. No, we've just been what? giving this to look at. So that's cordless. Oh, it's got the cord connected to it. <laughs> That's cordless. Um, what do you use that for? It, it fires... Uh, it fires little tiny pins. Nails um, and uh, staples what go in your black like, staple hammer. Under, underlay staples uh, it fires and it probably would be quite good for flights of stairs on the fronts where you, you 
if you wanted to get them in a nice row, but um, it, again, it's a useful thing. If, if you can't throw your hammer staple in, you can get that in, but um, yeah, that's a useful thing, isn't it? I use my maestro for grippering, so I suppose with the nail, the nails in, it'd be handy for gripping because you've no lead in yeah, your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, th this probably does a number of jobs, but again, I've got me 4,000 in the van and that tends to do everything. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's new on the market. They're not even out yet, are they? So, no, uh, no. That's, that's a box to it there. One thing I use a lot uh, is the staple remover. Dead simple, dead cheap. Yeah. Flipping. Yeah. Brilliant little tool. If both <laughs> legs are still in the ground with a bit of underlay under yeah. it, ideal. It doesn't like one leg out of the staple out the ground, but yeah. And you can do a flight of stairs and you just flick them up. It don't clamps you? the stair it clamps yeah. the actual staple and pulls it out, doesn't it? Yeah. So yeah. it is a yeah. that's, that is a handy tool. Like and I do know like the that. answers that other people would say you can use a hook blade, you can use your stair tool. Why, but, why but, but this, use blade? I'd use yeah, yeah use staple lifter. For the price they are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're good. And once you get the hang of it, which don't take much to get in the hang of it, but you you're flicking them out like yeah. nobody's yeah. business on yeah. you. The plastic uh, T tucker, I don't see I don't I don't see the point of that really. Well, it's, it's, it's just the it's same as the other one, it's tea, just the, the handle's a bit different. I quite like, I'd never thought I'd like a T handle, but just on the one that I, I rocked, I, I thought it was quite good. But I, I mean, I don't need a T handle to work one. <laughs> I quite fancy those mallets, the... Uh, Which are yeah, that one, yeah. yeah. They seem all right. What's the just point in the two different sides? Is there a, is there a reason? Two different sizes of mallet. No, the sides, one's white, one's black. Yeah, non-marking, the white one. The white one's a non-marking side and the other one's just a normal, normal yeah, rubber. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just use a, a white mallet all the time anyway. So if you're, if you're uh, bolstering some stirs in and you're going close to the stringer, switch it around to the white in case you catch it type thing. Yeah, yeah. but the general idea is don't catch it in it. No, no, I know, I know they say they're not marking, but yeah. The stir claw, you know, the stir claw, I've got one, don't use it. No. Stir what? Just, just wrap it back yes. here. Like the bird, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is stair claw. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a crane stair claw. You do see a lot of lads use that. It gives you some, uh, gives you a bit of tension, so you, you you can place that on your step, pull down, and you can staple between between the dips on it. Um, I'd say it'd be good for some situations. I wouldn't mind having one to to just have a play around with it. But uh, I do a lot of upholstered stairs, but I, I tend to do it from the bottom yeah. and stretch it. I, I, and use the nose of your staple to, to yeah, yeah, get to tighten it, it up. Yeah. That's just how I've always done it. Because I'm scared of when you're coming down, you've not got the tension, and then it could like, start coming off the grip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you, yeah, you pull the box step after you, before you're off, like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are, anything else you'd use yeah. it here, Paddy? There's, what about the crane rollers? Is, is that. That's form rollers for uh, safety flooring. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. This is something, you know. One thing I would use and I do use is the pro knee pads. So a lot of contract lads use those. I'm, I'm yeah, just a lot do, of contract they? fitters. But I, I had issues with my knees about ten years ago. Bought a pair of these. They do get a bit of taking used to because you're quite elevated quite off, the ground, off the ground. Yeah. yeah, and then obviously you have to get used to the straps around the back of your knees, but. You soon get used to it, and I'd rather that than you know my knees yeah. aching all night. So I've got, I think I've got four pairs of these now. Um, they're great. I've have them in the training centre for lads who turn up with no knee pads on. Um, but yeah, you can literally drop to your knees in these. It's like being on the sofa. So well, the the made of four, aren't they? Yeah, four. Give yeah. you a lot of support, and you never have any knee issues with these. So yeah, yeah I recommend these. An anti free spray. Yeah. Now this Brilliant is something. Stuff. It's a new thing to me, you, I, it's you who mentioned it. I've known about it for three years, I've, got, I've had a few cans. It's good stuff, isn't it? I, I use it a lot when I'm doing uh, size up. When, when I'm doing the stirs, I'll roll the stirs up, shove some tissue in the middle and just spray it. Just spray and, it. And it, it, saves you, it saves you sealing all the edges. Yeah, and I use it, I do some uh, carpet whipping. If people bring me a Axminster rug, which these Axminster rugs are quite sparse, uh, and, and the weft and warp are quite far apart. When you cut them, they want to fall to bits. You spray this on. Not only that, you spray this on, and when you cut it, like you said, when it's a little bit wet still, 
Your knife glides through, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. And then it, it goes hard. But yeah, anti fray spray, it is good stuff. It's non marking, it's clear. If you get it on the front, it isn't going to show. I do notice it does, there's a, makes it a little bit darker where this has been. So you just need to be aware of that. But yeah, it is good stuff. And I always have a tin on my van. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, that's, that's something as well worth having. But yeah, there's a crack, crack in the rear tools, flipping something for everybody. So. Yeah. I think we've all been up and down three or four times this morning getting a little shopping list. Yeah. Well, and there's not many places you can walk into like this and actually see, touch yeah. and, uh, and, and see what you're buying, all, all this internet uh, shopping. You only know what you've got when, you, when it arrives at your door really, don't you? Not so. many flooring suppliers have this many tools yeah. to access. Well, well WS, so. they do online and... And, well, this is and you tend to get it yeah. next day, don't you? If you, yeah. if you yeah. order it online, it's there. I mean, I, I would say that delivery is second to none, basically. Well, so it's well known for that. Uh, yeah. 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 Speedy delivery. But, right, yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah. Cheers.